And from the foreign scenes joining us live via Skype from Toronto, Canada, is medical doctor Ruki Day. Good morning to you in Canada, though it's afternoon over here. Good morning. How are you? We are fine and we know you're keeping safe. Now, very quickly, um, I know that you're one of those who are in the front line, so to speak, in terms of meeting face to face with, uh, you know, patients. How are you coping? There's something wrong with your sound. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Is it any Fault better? Connection. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you now. Okay. I was saying that we know that you're one of those medical practitioners who on a daily would have to go to the hospital and meet face to face or come in contact with patients. And the first question would be, how are you coping even as medical practitioners? To be honest, uh, we've never seen anything like this. This has been really unprecedented and um, very scary to, for even the most experienced of us. As you know, I have almost 30 years of um, being a physician and I've been in Canada since 2000 working as a family physician and we haven't seen anything like this. I mean, currently, as you know, we're over a million in the world and in Canada we have almost um, 11,268 cases. and. Um, almost 2,000 deaths here in Canada. So it's been really, really difficult. Um, we're stretched thin. Um, we are still struggling with what every other person is struggling with, which is the testing kits and um, knowing who to test. We know the virus is a silent killer, means people that have it don't know they have it and they're moving around spreading it. And um, that's why it's um, reached over 100 countries in less than three months and killed, you know, almost um, over 50,000 people. So it's something that we don't really have a good answer to yet because there's no vaccine and no known treatment that prevents it or actually treats it. We just have to observe you. And the best treatment actually is preventing it, which is don't catch it. it means maintain all the guidelines we have put by the WHO, the CDC. Um, avoid going out if you don't have to go out. In fact, there's a coffee right now in, in Toronto, in Ontario, where it's absolutely necessary you can go out once a week you can go shopping and um if you don't have to leave your house don't leave your house schools are shut down all the public places are shut down borders are shut as in most countries at the moment so what we advise in as physicians in the front line stay at home for us and we go to work for you that's the advice when you are out be aware of your environment the virus doesn't move, you move the virus. So what you have to do is avoid close contact with people. Even if you're in a queue, maintain the six feet distance that we say. Wash your hands often, wash your whole hands as in between your hands, your tips of your hands for at least 20 seconds. If you don't have water, there are hand sanitizers, use them. There are various types, there are little ones you can put you know, in your purse, use them. Still use 20 seconds of sanitizing. Don't assume that because it's sanitizer, you just rub it. No, wash with the sanitizer like you're washing your hands for 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, there's this idea that the virus is mutating, and we think it is. So before we thought it was just close contact when you touch or through aerosol. Now we think it's airborne. And in fact, there's lots of evidence. That's why the asymptomatic spread is even worse. So we want you to actually protect yourself by doing barrier um, via, you know, the respirators that have been going around, even if you don't have a respirator, a simple scarf. So what I mean by respirator is something like this. This is a mask, mm -hmm. the N95 mask. This is hospital grade mask. Even there are different types, you know, and um, you can put that on if you can afford to get it. Or really there's a shortage of them. There are different types. There's the simple ones that the surgical mask. I'm sure you see these ones all over the place. But we also know that even the hijab style, so even if you just put a simple scarf like this one here and cover your mouth or your nose, you can prevent the air droplets from getting to you, so the airborne type. Now, remember, your eyes are not covered. And um, so if you like, you could wear, some people that wear glasses, they could wear these types of goggles, mm 
or just simple glasses to avoid actually touching your eyes. Some people have resorted to wearing eye protective wear as well. Right. Remember, don't touch your face. Dr. Don't touch your nose. Dr. Don't touch Ruki, your mouth. Unfortunately, I have to thank you and let you go in the interest of time. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And please do stay safe. Okay. Thank you. All right.